Hi, it's Sammy teacher. I hope you all are doing well and staying safe. We miss you guys. I'm feeling good, good, good in a crazy way God's love changed me more than I can say Can't keep this in, gotta let it out Gonna tell the whole world that Your love is spinning me round and around Yeah, it's turning me upside down I can't believe the way you love me more than I can contain I'm gonna turn around and give, give, give it away
Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for your love and grace. Even though we are going through a tough time because of coronavirus, we have hope in you and trust you as our Lord. Please heal the sick and help the needy. We pray that you would comfort those that are brokenhearted and bring them closer to Jesus. Lord, Thank you for giving us the online worship service today, and please lead us with your Holy Spirit. Also, give us wisdom to understand your word and to know you more. Help us love you and our neighbors. Thank you for being with us all the time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 지금처럼 어려운 때에 코로나 바이러스 이어진 힘든 때에 같이 있어줘서 감사합니다. 하나님 그리고 하나님 같이 가족이랑 같이 잘 놀게 해줘서 감사합니다. 하나님 그리고 또 가족이랑 같이 밥잘 먹고 잘 놀게 해줘서 감사합니다. 나 근데 이것들 싸우고 떼고 주님 안 좋아하는 거 한데 제발 용서해 주세요. 하나님 그리고 또 빨리 다시 지 교회 가서 주님을 예배하게 해주세요. 하나님 그리고 또 다시 학교 가고 해서 어 아프 하나도 아, 아픈 축구 없이 잘 만나게 해주세요. 하나님 감사합니다. 이천님을 기도했습니다. 아멘. Good morning, ESC Elementary friends. Um, I'm really glad to see you guys again. And I know that about two weeks are left until school is over. So I hope that you guys stay strong and finish strong. Make sure you guys do all your homework and all the readings and you know physical activities, walking, jump roping, and jumping jack. Okay, so make sure you guys stay strong and finish strong. Okay, um, today I have a few papers that I'm going to show you, and I want you guys to guess um, what I'm going to be talking about. Okay, so. Here is a scepter, it's called scepter. Um, 
So this is the first picture, okay? The first hint of today's story, okay? And the second, this one, as soon as you see this, you might guess uh, who I'm going to be talking about today, okay? It's Queen. All right? And then lastly, it's a verse. I'm not going to say the name of the book because then I will be giving out the, the answer. I'll do it even though it's against the law. And if I die, if I have to die, I'll die. Okay? It says, I'll do it even though it's against the law. And if I have to die, I'll die. Okay? So who do you think I'm going to be talking about today? Yes. Today I'm going to be talking about Queen Esther. Okay, so we'll be back after this video. When Cyrus was king of Persia, he sent some of God's people back to Judah to rebuild the temple in Jerusalem. God's people were called Jews because they were from Judah. Though some Jews returned to Judah to rebuild the temple, many Jews were still in Persia when Ahasuerus became the new king of Persia. When the king's wife did not listen to him, he decided to not let her be queen anymore. The king of Persia needed a queen. He chose Esther to be queen. Esther was very beautiful. She was a Jew and had been raised by her cousin, Mordecai. Mm. Esther did not tell the king that she was a Jew. One day, Mordecai heard that Haman, a very important leader who worked for the king, was planning to kill all the Jews. Mordecai was upset. He was a Jew. He did not want all the people he loved to be killed. Mordecai and all the Jews cried. Esther did not know what was wrong. She sent a messenger to ask Mordecai why all the Jews were upset. Mordecai told Esther about Haman's evil plan. You have to do something, Mordecai said. You are the queen. Ask the king to stop Haman. Ask him to save the Jewish people. Esther sent a message back to Mordecai. No one can approach the king unless the king calls for that person first, Esther said. The punishment is death. Unless the king holds out his scepter, then you may live. Mordecai encouraged Esther to think about it. You are a Jew, he said. If you do not stop Haman, he will kill you too. Maybe this is why you are the queen. Maybe God put Esther in the palace to save her people. Esther asked Mordecai to gather the Jewish people and fast. They would not eat or drink for three days. They would pray to God for help. Then Esther would go to the king. She was willing to die to save the Jews. God's plan all along was to send the Messiah through Abraham's family. Haman's evil plan might have stopped God's plan, but God was in control. He was working out a plan to use Esther to rescue his people and make the way for his son, Jesus, to come into the world. So for, uh, for these people, it was a scary situation. Okay? Um, as you guys know, uh, Queen Esther's uncle, Mordecai, or cousin, he was, um, he found out that King uh, Haman was going to kill all the Jews, right? So that he asked Esther, right? As you guys have seen the video, um, to go, you gotta save our people. Right? So um, when Esther became um, the queen, she knew that it was going to be a huge task for her. And when she heard the news, you know, she had to decide whether she was going to uh, go to the king or just ignore, okay? And 
The verse from Esther it says, There is a certain law that everyone knows about. All the king's officials know about it. The people in the royal territories know about it. It applies to any man or woman who approaches a king in the inner courtyard without being sent for. It says that they must be put to death, but there is a way out. Suppose a king reaches out his gold scepter toward them, then their lives will be spared. But 30 days have gone by since a king, king sent for me. Okay. So she knew that if she just went to the king without being called, it says that the person is going to be killed unless the king reaches out the gold scepter. Right? So I'm sure she was really fearful. Right? And in her heart, I'm sure she knew, right? But also she was afraid that she might be killed. Of course, right? Who would not be afraid if we knew that we were going to be killed, right? And she was not even sure if the king was going to save her. Okay? So in this kind of situation, right? Either she is too afraid to carry out God's, uh, God's calling and purpose and, um, and other one is she can be faithful and obey in spite of being afraid. And she had to decide whether she was going to help out and save God's people or just ignore and just save herself. But what did she do? Right? It says, Go gather all the Jews who are in Susa and fast for my benefit. Don't eat or drink anything for three days. I and my attendants will fast just as you do. So as you guys can see on the PowerPoint, it says faithful equals obedience plus God's promise. Okay, God promised that God was going to save his people. That's God's promise. And we know that God's promise is always, right? He's always faithful. He never changes, right? But also there has to be our obedience. There was Esther's obedience, right? And that is faithfulness, right? That's being faithful. When we obey, we don't just obey because we think that we can do it or we feel like you know we are able to accomplish but we have to believe in god's promise that's why we are able to obey in fearful situation even when we're afraid we can still obey because we know that there is god's promise that never changes so there are many situations right? even for esther when she had to face maybe she might be facing death right? and she was fearful but she realized right, that she needed to save, be a part of God's big plan to save God's people. And it was according to God's plan that she was there at that moment. And she believed that God is going to use her obedience and um, use her faithfulness. So when she obeyed and she fasted, and you can see, right? That she is depending on God. She's asking God for his help. Because she knows that it is uh, it is ultimately right, God's plan. That God is going to carry out his plan when she obeys. So she fasts. She doesn't eat or drink for three days. And she asks people to pray with her. Right? And also Mordecai prays. You know, and he puts on sackcloth. And mourning that, please save my people. And of course, God has answered their prayers. And God knew their hearts, their obedient heart, their faithfulness. Right? So God, the end, saves his people. And we know that God is in control over the universe. Everything that happens, it has to be passed by God. I have this picture, okay, and you will see this heart. Right? It's like a puzzle. Okay? And think of it as the heart is a God's big plan. Okay? And do you see those missing pieces? Right? God uses his people to carry out his plan. It could be you, it could be me. Sometimes God uses young people, God uses old people. Okay? But God has a plan for everyone, for everything in every minute. So if you do not obey 
and if God has some some kind of task for you and you are too afraid that you're too you know too fearful that it was it's not going to benefit you and you just you know kind of ignore right then you know what God's going to send somebody else God is going to use somebody else who's faithful I remember when I was in college I was a part of this Christian club and you know we go out on campus and just to strangers we go and we share the gospel we just uh, sit down and we say oh do you have about five minutes and then right but it's kind of it's kind of scary right because um, a lot of times I get rejected they say oh it's okay right oh I don't like Christianity oh I don't want to hear that right but we still go because we want to be obedient to his word and I knew that um, when I went to the college um, that God sent me there for purpose and there are so many people who are lost and there are many days that I was able to share the gospel and pray for them and many people came to know Christ but there are also people that rejected and um, but I know that it's God's plan right? I cannot change their heart but I do, I'm going to be um, that part of God's big plan so I want you guys to know that you are part of God's big plan. When God calls you to be his child, you are part of God's big plan. Okay, but now that it's your turn to either decide whether you are going to obey, even though it might be fearful, it might be um, you might be a little afraid, okay, or you can just have someone else be part of God's big plan. And my, there might be times when God wants you guys to, um, you know, go up to some, you know, some friends that are maybe, um, may not have any friends, right? It's kind of, it's, it's difficult, right? Because you have your own friend. You don't want to go up to that person who is being bullied or who's lonely. But if God is convicting your heart, right, and say, hey, um, I want you to go to that, that friend and talk to him, right, or talk to her, be her friend. And you might think, oh, I don't know, I'm too, you know, too afraid that my friends might make fun of me, right? or they might leave me. But if you know, if the Holy Spirit works in your heart, and you know that it's from God, right? I want you to take that action and see what God does. If Esther did not obey, right, she would not experience that, God's power, right, and God's work. But because she obeyed, even though she was afraid, she was able to experience God's, um, you know, God's power, God's, and he, she was able to see, right, that God was in full control all along, right, and all, all her life. So I want you guys to remember through Esther's story that you guys are part of God's big plan. We might not see everything, right? But God is even now, He's calling you to carry out His task. It doesn't have to be something big like saving the nation, saving people. Okay? God is going to give you a task that you can accomplish right now, where you, from where you are, from your home, from your school, from your neighbor, okay? Just little things. Just sharing maybe your candies or your snacks with your neighbor. You know, when we got the goodie bag for uh, the resurrection day, you know, I gave out some to my neighbor who does not believe. Right? Even that, that's a little bit, you know, it's a little step, but I'm obeying to God, share God's love. So you guys can do that. So I want you guys to think about and be sensitive and, you know, open your ears big to God's voice. And what he wants you to do every day so that you can be and experience God's big plan and God's power and what he can do through you. I want you guys to see that. I want you guys to experience that. So let's uh, pray at this time. Let's close our, um, our sermon today with prayer. Okay, let's pray. Uh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for today through a serious story. We know that... Um, you know, there's a lot of things that we can learn from this story. But Lord, I want our friends to remember uh, that you are in full control and you are 
uh, that you have called us to be um, in your plan and Lord we want to be used by you we want we do not want to be replaced but Lord we want to carry out we want to take action on the things that you have called us to do Lord Father God so we can serve you so we can experience your power we can experience your um, your miracles uh, things that you are going to do through us Father God so I pray that you will speak to our friends Father and Lord that we may be able to um, just be obey uh, be obedient and be faithful um, even in the scary situation, Father God. And as Esther has obeyed and she depended on you, Father God, by fasting and praying, Lord, help us to be like Esther, who can always depend on you. Uh, we thank you for this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, so um, this week we have um, uh, nothing uh, new uh, announcement, but we have uh, our Bible study once again, Bible reading. And it's been really fun. Um, so I want you guys to really join if you haven't been able to part, uh, be, uh, come on our, our Bible reading, please come join us. Um, it's, um, I'm really enjoying spending time with our friends. So please come Tuesday 10 o'clock a.m. and then Wednesday 7 p.m. Okay, and um, next week's uh, prayer is going to be um, Matthew, our first prayer Matthew, okay? And hopefully you guys, once again, stay strong. Uh, school is I know, almost over, so uh, do all your work, be faithful in your schoolwork. And like I shared last week, okay, obey your parents, okay? Um, so you guys have a good week, and we will um, see you guys next week. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye.